And James Stinson, the manager of this car wash, was a viewer. He saw these fugitives for the last 11 days. He knew what they looked like. He saw that car, that truck right there, parked in the bay that did not move. He thought it was weird. He saw something. He said something. He actually went up and inspected that vehicle. He actually opened the door of that vehicle. He checked to see the keys were in the vehicle and thought it was weird. He moved the vehicle because it was blocking one of the car wash bays and he called the police. And the police at some point stopped by, ran the plates and decided it wasn't stolen. And that was that. But he didn't stop there. He looked at his security camera video. He saw that figure. You could see him lurking back there. That's Casey White back there. And you know something? This manager knew that his tattoos matched up with the tattoos he'd seen on TV. So he persevered and he got that information to the U.S. Marshals. And you have the result you have now. James Stinson is a hero and James Stinson is now with me live. Sir, congratulations. Um, I don't know how important uh, you think you are, but if it weren't for you, I don't think any of this would have happened. Do you realize how significant the role was that you played? No, not really. I didn't intend to be a hero. And I kind of figured out it was him. I had to hunt with him. I was concerned about a single local police officer stopping him, somebody getting hurt. I kind of figured it would end up in a, in a high speed chase, a gun battle, a shootout. Luckily, no, nobody was hurt other than and the people that done this. So my question to you is when you saw that suspicious truck sitting in the bay, of your car wash and it didn't move for a very long time you dropped your uh, i think your granddaughter off at school yet you, you picked the granddaughter back up and all that while that truck right. was there how nervous were you when you approached the truck to take a better look inside i was really nervous because with the tennessee plate and i already heard that the suv was abandoned in tennessee and I kind of uh, slowly walked up to the truck and kind of glanced over, thinking somebody could be in it. Maybe asleep would raise up or passed out or even dead. Nobody was in the truck. So I opened the door. The keys are in the ignition. I started the truck. The truck started fine. So I knew there wasn't nothing wrong with the vehicle to, to it being abandoned. That's when I went back and looked at my cameras and I seen his tattoo on his arm. I pulled a video up on my cell phone of him down in Alabama and the tattoos matched. And that is you doing citizen sleuthing because that's exactly what the U.S. Marshals determined is that those tattoos were a match, even though it was very hard to see that that was the suspect, Casey White. So, Mr. Stinson, um, did you see anything inside that truck when you got in to get it out of that car wash bay? Did you happen to notice any uh, wigs or any clothes or any receipts or anything that looked sort of unusual in that truck? No, no, I didn't. But the police officer that walked up and looked inside it, he said, oh, my God, there's a gun lock. He said, but I don't see a gun. He did see a gun lock. I'm assuming the gun lock belonged to her. Most law enforcement have gun locks. So, and he said, told me, he said, there's nothing I can do about it. It's not reported stolen. And that's when I said, I can, I'll have it told. So that's how it wound so up you in drove the yard. Yeah, so you drove it out of the bay, you call the wrecker, and all the while, are you a little bit frustrated that the police haven't shown up on mass to interview you about, you know, your surveillance tape and what you saw? Like this, I mean, this was a week ago. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I, I was wanting to go in there and show him the video and say, hey, look at this guy. He's, and you could see him acting suspicious. I said, there's got to be something to this. I mean, it's, it defies logic that you're so close by, you call in a tip, and it's a good tip, and no one, you know, descends upon, you know, your house or your place of business to ask you a bunch of questions and ask to see your surveillance tape. This all could have been wrapped up maybe a week ago, and Vicki White might not be dead if this were a week ago. You know, where I made my mistake, I should have, I, I got to give thanks to the news media. Y'all the ones that brought this to an end, because when I called y'all, y'all got the ball rolling. So the Can news, I ask you about that reward money, be. Mr. Stinson? 
the uh, it's you know when I came to air, I thought it was about fifteen thousand dollars. But Brian Enton, our correspondent, who you did an interview with uh, earlier live on News Nation, uh, he says it's up to about twenty five thousand. I'll bet you could use that money. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's a big plus. But I'm not I'm not so much concerned about the money. I'm just glad nobody else got hurt, other than uh, the victims. Do you have a message for Casey Cole White tonight, the fugitive they now have behind bars? Stay where you're at. Stay put. It's a good one. Mr. Simpson, I hope you get the reward money. I think you deserve it. You're an amazing person, and you know, but for your diligence, uh, we might not have Casey White behind bars, and the public at large might not be as safe as they are because of you. My motto, and I heard it from our local prosecutor, Nick Herman, if you see something, say something. Everybody James needs Simpson, to do thank that. you so much. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.